China's social credit system block list has reached 8.54 million people. The CCP initiates a new phase of financial actions. The rich are being apprehended one after another. U.S. do next step to develop thousands of drones to help Taiwan deal with China. Recruitment at China University of Geosciences sparks controversy. Beijing warns Kiev after Chinese companies are labeled sponsors of war. In May 2016, the State Council of the Communist Party of China, or CCP, issued what is known as the Social Credit System. This system assigns credit scores to individuals based on their financial performance, legal compliance, and verbal and behavioral conduct. It utilizes reward and punishment mechanisms to improve credit standards. The credit score applied by the CCP includes political stance, criminal records, social relationships, shopping habits, and other information. It uses modern technology to comprehensively monitor people's behavior and subjectively determine their trustworthiness. According to data from Chinese courts, approximately 8.54 million people have been placed on the blacklist for being unable to repay debts and becoming defaulters. Recently, a two-year-old girl was included in the list because her father was in debt, highlighting the severity of the CCP's social credit system. According to official documents from the CCP, three types of behavior affect social credit. Commercial behavior, social behavior, and online speech. When someone's behavior exceeds the score criteria, they inadvertently get added to the blacklist, and the Chinese Communist Party government will never provide advance notice, nor are there channels for appeal or relief. For example, a child was kidnapped and trafficked in Zhenzhou, Hainan, China. When the family called the police, they found themselves labeled as a voluntary family. There are also Chinese practicing lawyers who are unaware that they have been blacklisted. They only realize it when they are unable to purchase bus or plane tickets. Officials point out that the CCP has listed extreme suggestions, protests, and surrounding party buildings and government offices as crucial points in the credit system. Those submitting suggestions are also listed as key monitoring subjects. According to unclear social credit deduction criteria, those who offer suggestions cannot buy bus or plane tickets, and subsequent complaints are severely affected. Recently, the owner of an advertising company in Jiangxi was blacklisted for failing to repay a bank loan. The court banned him from using WeChat payment accounts for shopping, and he was not even allowed to use it to buy food for his young son. He mentioned that for all Chinese citizens on the blacklist, their restricted life makes it harder for them to find jobs and repay debts, thereby affecting consumption. This irrational comprehensive credit rating system will only hinder the overall economic development of China, creating a vicious circle, much like a black whirlpool sucking in everything, rendering it unable to turn around. China's economic stability is threatened, prompting the Chinese Communist Party, or CCP, to pursue financial gains. Recent reports indicate the launch of a nationwide operation with collaborative efforts between local governments and the CCP's Commission for Discipline Inspection. This time, the focus is on the heads of publicly listed companies. In a recently shared chat screenshot circulated online, a netizen mentioned that a friend couldn't go overseas recently. This acquaintance is a shareholder in a listed company. In this instance, executives, including the CEO and the second and third sons of a listed company, were apprehended by the police in various cities like Nanchang and Datong. The police explicitly stated that the leadership of specific municipal projects faced issues from a few years ago, and directly asserted that each executive could secure their freedom by paying 30 million RMB, over $4 million. If the payment isn't made, they will be detained and prevented from sleeping. Furthermore, withdrawing funds from the company after payment is impossible as the listed company needs to make an official announcement, and the money must be paid personally. Another participant in the chat group mentioned a friend in Dali, Yunnan, who claimed to have been offered freedom for 20 million yuan. The Discipline Inspection Commission also allegedly has designated targets, starting from the investment promotion offices of each province. Any identified issues result in the arrest of private business owners, executed precisely. 
The standard amount is 30 million, deemed affordable by everyone. Evan Osnos, former China correspondent for The New Yorker, disclosed three months ago that the CCP was seeking individuals with assets exceeding 30 million yuan, demanding 20% of their wealth or facing tax inspections. Before the CCP came to power, they were once proud of such methods. An article published on the official website of the party's media, People's Daily, on May 6, 2011, highlighted Chen Yi, revealing the Red Army's fundraising secrets in 1929, employing notes to extort wealthy gentry and threatening to burn down their houses if they refused to pay. In the early days of the CCP, Mao Zedong initially promised to protect capitalists, but reversed course in 1952, forcing a public-private partnership that led many capitalists into despair. Now, facing a financial crisis, the CCP is reverting to these money-grabbing tactics. In the above-mentioned chat, someone urged, Run. It will be impossible if you don't run. The U.S. military has taken the next step in its plan to build thousands of lethal seaborne attack drones. According to USNI News' report, this could be the key to stopping China from invading Taiwan. USNI News cited a U.S. defense official saying that on January 29th, the Defense Innovation Unit, or DIU, called companies to submit proposals for small, unmanned surface vehicles, or USVs, to participate in the Pentagon's plan. The DIU solicitation lists various benefits from USVs, such as the ability to detect enemy ships and support other sensors, weapons, and other missions. The USVs can be deployed from well decks or boat davits and stored neatly in containers. The naval analyst Brian Clark told USNI News on January 30th, this is their effort to try to get some new, kinetic, lethal USVs fielded that can be employed probably in a Western Pacific-told context, maybe the Strait of Taiwan. Clark added, They want to go out to the commercial world and say, All right, what do you got in terms of kinetic, lethal USVs that can be produced at scale? The report said that the U.S. Navy has quietly tested a type of lethal attack drone named Hellscape that can prevent a Chinese military landing in Taiwan. With the combination of loitering munitions and lethal attack drones, the U.S. military can cause the Chinese military to fall into chaos in the strait, giving the U.S. and Taiwan more time to prepare forces and attack strategies. China University of Geosciences faces controversy as a recruitment list reveals connections between candidates and high-ranking officials, sparking concerns of nepotism and unfair employment practices. The disclosure comes amid China's economic downturn and heightened competition for jobs among college graduates. With long-standing rumors of favoritism in public institutions, the School of Water Resources and Environment of China University of Geosciences, Beijing, published a list of candidates who passed the preliminary examination for teacher recruitment in 2024 between January 18th and the 24th. Among the eight hires for teaching positions, Zhang Boiti, a prospective career teacher, disclosed in the remarks column that his father is Zhang Momo, the director of the school's development, planning, and discipline construction department. Two other candidates noted relationships with the School of Water Resources and Environment Supervisors. A Jehu user shared details about Zhang Boiti's educational history, suggesting preferential treatment. The university then removed the recruitment list from public view prompting ridicule from netizens about the lack of transparency in recruitment practices. Similar incidents in other universities and state-owned enterprises have fueled debates about nepotism and the hereditary occupation of national resources. Critics argue that such practices diminish overall capabilities, hinder innovation, and contribute to social inequities. Also, currently in China, there is no freedom of the press and oversight. What is called progress is no longer genuine social justice, especially regarding the expectations for fairness and employment for the younger generation. Reuters reported that Beijing has informed Kiev that bilateral relations between the two sides will be affected after Ukraine labeled 14 Chinese companies international sponsors of war. One source said, The Chinese ambassador said that all this, the situation with the blacklist, could have a negative impact on our relations. The Chinese companies labeled are among 48 companies globally that Kiev believes have business activities supporting Russia's war effort. 
The first source told Reuters that the Chinese side expressed its opinion on the list of companies that Ukraine blacklisted, without offering any specific conditions or threats. Meanwhile, a second source said that Beijing may link this issue with China's imports of Ukrainian grain. A Chinese foreign ministry spokesperson told Reuters on February 1st that China firmly opposes the inclusion of Chinese enterprises in the relevant list and demands that Ukraine immediately correct its mistakes and eliminate negative impacts. Before Russia launched its full-scale invasion of Ukraine on February 24, 2022, China was the largest trading partner and an important customer for Ukrainian grain, sunflower oil, and iron ore. Beijing is leaning towards Moscow in the war between Russia and Ukraine. The force ruling China is said to be the biggest support for the Putin government to have the confidence to maintain the war of aggression that is about to enter its third year in Ukraine.